Hello everybody and welcome back to episode 32 of the video series in which we program an entire video game from scratch in the C programming language. Last time where we ended up was we finished the uh, character naming screen. So let's see what that looks like real quick. Uh, looks just like this and it works fine. Um, I centered things a little better um, everything is working. Um, when you hit the OK button, though, it's time to go to the overworld uh, game state at that point. Um, so that's where we left off. I'm going to go ahead and lower my volume a bit. Okay, and also before we start, um, I did have a couple of, no, I had one interesting comment. Sorry, I'm just making sure that my OBS audio is still working. Oh, I didn't even tell you guys. Um, this is actually the second time that I've recorded this episode. The first time, everything was going really well, and then I got about 45 minutes into the recording, and I realized that OBS was not capturing my audio. And it was a big bummer. So I'm re-recording it. Everything looks like it's working. All right, so where were we? Um, okay, so I had a comment, and I'm going to read this comment. The uh, commenter says, I had that idea about stuff made in Electron 2, but I've run a silly test yesterday where I opened 13,000 line of code file in VS Code and everything worked fine. I consider this surprisingly good result given that VS Code was able to handle that file way better than the editor that I use Emacs and I also use really old hardware. The first time I tried VS Code years ago I didn't like it at all but as time went by people put the work in on it made it a way better product and then the last line is of course for max performance the ideal is to use tools fully made in C such as Forcoder and Remedy BG. So um, this is a, if, if you don't if you don't remember if you guys don't remember this is a comment that was made on episode seven. In episode seven, I uh, sort of I sort of ranted against um, well Electron mainly. Um, I don't really like Electron uh, that, as, as a framework, um, nor you know Node.js or um, I can't think of any other examples, but um, those two specifically, um, I, I feel like they're way too slow in terms of both, both in terms of CPU cycles and in terms of memory usage. Uh, it's just the, unacceptable, in my opinion. Um, and this is what I, you know, VS Code is made with, and um, I guess Slack and Microsoft Teams, and um, probably a whole bunch of other stuff. And I get why, um, you know, there it definitely does have a use. Um, it's just that performance is not one of its uh, strong suits. So um, let's see. I thought it was interesting though that his editor, uh, he said he used his Emacs and it uh, VS Code, uh, or I should say, it's interesting to me that Emacs was having trouble with this uh, 13,000 line text file. I've never personally used, uh, I've never personally been an Emacs user, but I hear people, especially, um, you know, Linux and Unix people uh, praise Emacs. It's kind of like an old um, standard that's always been around and is always, you know, always like um, a mainstay, uh, really popular. So I'm, I'm surprised to hear that it has performance problems. Um, and then, uh, so, uh, let's see, so let's see, Forcoder, um, I've never used Forcoder and Remedy BG either. I've seen them before. I know that, um, uh, this guy named, uh, Casey Miratori does, a, a video stream like this where he is also working on a game. Um, 
he and he uses four coder and remedy bg um you know he he is on an entirely different level um you know he's been he's been working on this game for five years and he's doing all this super intense uh stuff with things like you know particle systems and ray casting ray tracing uh you know bump mapping tessellation all this you know all this really technical stuff and it's really interesting but the problem is um i feel and again no disrespect because he's a way better programmer than me but um i feel like you know he's been doing all this cool at this, all this cool this graphical stuff um in this program but he hasn't actually made any progress on his actual game uh you know in in five years uh he's still kind of like in the same starting room that you know uh that he was in five years ago um so that that's sort of like how i want to differentiate myself and this channel and is that you know very a very simple goal all i want to do is make a clone of like a dragon warrior or dragon quest type of game i want to get it done and i want to get it done before you know before i hit you know five years i don't want to be still working on this game in five years i want it to be finished um you know famous last words though right um all right so yeah i, I don't i don't know i guess i could say a little bit more about that comment too um things that are written in programming languages such as javascript java c sharp things of this nature those languages all have their uses but um, problem is is that they basically they they take your performance away and replace it with you know convenience and in that convenience can be you know a great asset to you it can be it can really help you out a lot if you need to you know whip up a program in just a few hours you know you can you can do stuff very quickly in those in those types of languages whereas in a language like C where you don't have as much support from libraries and you're doing everything the hard way you're doing everything the tedious way um, but you have your your performance is there by default see these other languages uh, you have to fight the language to get your performance back you have to end up uh, writing things in an unidiomatic way and doing little tricks and hacks and things like this to performance tune the language uh, just to get your performance back to where it could have been from the very beginning had you just written it in, in C or C++. So, um, you know, thing like, for instance, he's the, the commenter says, you know, when he first tried VS Code, he didn't like it, but time went on and people put work into it and made it a better product. Yeah, that's exactly right. Uh, VS Code is a very um, trendy product for Microsoft and they have an entire team of developers you know and you know all these developers are making six-figure salaries and they have PMs and uh, they're doing all this this you know thousands of engineering hours have gone into it so yeah of course it should be uh, it, it should be getting into better shape um, for all the work that they've put into it right so Anyway, I guess that's my my rant about that. Got to flip back over here to OBS and make sure my audio is still working. All right, so we have work to do. Um, I want to get into the. I want to get to a state where, when you've named your character, you hit OK, it drops you into a uh, an overworld screen. And if you think about games like if you think about games like um, uh, Legend of Zelda Link to the Past on the Super Nintendo, you start inside of a house. Uh, you start the game inside of a house, right? And if you think of a game like Dragon Warrior or Dragon Quest, you start the game inside of the throne room with the king, right? Um, I don't. So I don't know yet if if the game is going to start indoors or outdoors. Um, but I think the it just makes more sense to start with the uh, outdoor overworld 
of map. So with that said, I do want to show you, um, I did write some things uh, and, and these are things that I wrote them uh, like an hour ago and then I realized that the OBS audio, o OBS wasn't recording my audio so I, now I have to um, re-record the episode. Um, what I did though is if you look at Hero, I basically I took screen position X and screen position Y and what the heck? My phone my phone just said I need your consent for something. I didn't even touch it. Uh, anyway, so if you look at screen position, I changed these uh, into what, a, what I'm calling a U point. See, at first I, I just made it a point. A point is a data structure. I think it's defined in win, Windows.h. It's simply a data structure with X and Y. So, um, but the problem is, is that they're, um, the, they're long data types. So they're signed, they're signed data types. And my, my functions like the blit32 bit per pixel bitmap function takes unsigned uh, inputs for x and y coordinates because screen position is I believe never going to be negative. I may actually end up changing my mind on that but for now I'm like okay well I don't think screen uh, position can be negative so I'm gonna make it I made my own data structure uh, called a U point which is in here somewhere there I made a U point uh, and it's simply an X and a Y unsigned um, but now that I'm thinking about it, I'm like well maybe I do want to support uh, uh, negative screen coordinates because I'm imagining how else am I going to uh, draw like what if you can walk off the edge of the screen and so your guy is sort of like moving off to, uh, the edge of the screen um, I might use negative screen coordinates in a situation like that I uh, don't really know but anyway it's not important right now we'll just leave it at that uh, U point and then um, what else did I do if you go to process or actually menu item underscore character naming underscore okay um, I wrote this little this little bit here that says simply says if you uh, click the OK button on the character naming screen and the uh, the character's name is uh, greater I guess greater than zero it should be greater than zero uh, then we're, we're gonna switch the game state to overworld we're gonna make gplayer.active true and we're gonna play a little set menu choose sound um, and I guess let's go see what that looks like. Okay, so now we're back at the screen. And, you know, I, I know we spent several episodes on this screen, and uh, we, we've got our walking animation down but I, I really am tired of looking at this single color uh, background I, I, I want to get some color into this game um, and so I think it's time that we draw uh, we draw a map a world map a tile map so if you what sort of what sort of map am I looking for um, I'll show you an example uh, dragon warrior map just like this There it is, and um, as you can see, uh, this is the world of Dragon Warrior. There's a little t there's a castle right here. There's a little town right here. You've got you know grasslands. You've got forest. You've got hills. You've got impassable mountains. You've got water. You've got swamp. Really cool stuff. So I think that you know in this game, there will be like. You know, if you're in a forest, you're more likely to run into different types of enemies than if you were in the plains. If you were in the hills, you might run into different kinds of monsters than if you were in, like, the desert, like right there. So, uh, this is the kind of map that I want to make. And 
the way I'm going to make it is I'm going to use this program called um, Tile. Error opening file. Yeah, that's fine. I deleted that, deleted that. Um, so this, this program is called Tiled, and it, it helps you create uh, tile maps, which I'm going to do right now. I'm going to go to New Map, um, Orthogonal, Orientation, CSV, uh, Tile Layer Format, uh, Tile Render Order, uh, and then the map size. So we know that each tile is going to be 16 by 16. So we just have to decide how big this thing is going to be. And uh, it has saved my settings uh, since last time. Uh, I know that that text is pretty small. It's probably pretty hard for you to read. But I just decided to, I basically just decided to do uh, an overworld map size of 10 screens by 10 screens. So my screen size is 384 pixels by 240 pixels so that's 24 tiles by 15 tiles so if you multiply that by 10 you get 240 tiles by 150 tiles and you get a overall map size of 3840 by 2400 pixels and I'm going to save that in Let's see, in my assets folder, I think I'm going to make a new folder called, um, uh, called Maps. And I'm going to name it Overworld. Overworld 01. Because, you know, I could end up having two overworlds. That would be cool. Um, if you recall uh, Final Fantasy 3 or Final Fantasy 6 uh, on the Super Nintendo, uh, they had two different worlds, right? You had a, a light world at the beginning, and then the world goes through some sort of apocalyptic event, and then it changes the entire overworld. That would be pretty cool uh, to have something like that. So anyway, I'm going to save that. And All right, so here is our, our world map, um, and it's completely empty right now. Is absolutely 100% empty. So I am going to need to um, create some tiles. If I go over here in the corner, it says new tile set. I can create a new tile set, and I'm going to call it uh, based on tile set image collection of images. I'm just going to call it uh, tile. Tile set one, save. I'm going to save it in the same place. All right, so now I've got this tile set, and I can add tiles to the tile set. Uh, but to do that, you need um, to draw some tiles. And what am I going to use to draw tiles? Um, I could use multiple things. I was thinking. Um, if I go to Steam, I have this cool little program called uh, Asaprite. I don't know exactly how to pronounce it. I guess it's Asaprite. Um, you can get this on Steam. You can also um, you can also download this from the developer's website too. But the thing I like about the Steam version is that it, it stays up to date, automatically updates itself. Um, we could use this potentially for drawing tiles. Uh, here it looks like this. You can see it's obviously made for, um, you know, with sort of a retro feel in mind. If I go to a new file, create a 16 pixel by 16 pixel thing. Okay. And here's my 16 pixel thing. And the other cool thing about this program is that the, um, the palettes, let's see, options, brush type, is it presets? Yeah, look at there. Um, this is a really cool feature. It has built into it uh, color palettes from all these different um, consoles, all these different gaming systems. Um, Atari 2600, Commodore 64, um, NES obviously is in there. Load. Okay. 
and you can you can supply your own uh, palettes as well. But here's here's the NES palette, and uh, this is going to be pretty pretty cool. Um, what what color do I want this to be? I'm gonna check, I'm gonna see if I can make um, grass. Uh, where is? And I'm not very good at this program. I don't use it very often. Paint bucket. Yeah. There we go. Grass tile. And now we need to add maybe some. We need to add maybe some grass to it, or what would you call these dots? Little rocks or pieces of mud. There we go. Um, what else? Try to make it sort of a random noise look. Okay. I think that's our first uh, tile of grass right there. So now I'm going to save it. The assets maps. Okay, and I'm going to call this uh, grass one dot bmp. And I guess I'm going to yeah, there we go. Save it as a bmp file. Click OK. File format bmp doesn't support alpha. Do you want to continue with bmp anyway? Yes. I know uh, this is good. So our our uh, 32 bits per pixel bitmaps actually do support the alpha channel, uh, but unfortunately, this program uh, doesn't have support for 32 uh, bit per pixel bitmaps, at least not as far as I am aware. Um, maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. I don't know. Um, in the end, though, I don't think it matters. I'm going to go back to tiled now. Oh, and by the way, um, you, this this tiled uh, program is also uh, free. Um, I encourage you to, you know, make a donation on the developer's website. You know, he, he does have uh, his website set up so that you can make donations. But if you're broke and you don't have any money, you can still download this program uh, for free. Um, though I do encourage you to uh, pay for it if you are able to, because you know I'm a big proponent of supporting software developers so anyway oh I didn't even tell you the way I found out about it <laughs> uh, I was playing this game called uh, I was playing this game called River City Ransom Underground River City Ransom Underground and uh, it's like it, it's basically the spiritual successor to a game called R River City Ransom which came out on the uh, Nintendo, the original NES. And the game holds a lot of nostalgia for me. I loved it when I was a kid. So um, when the sequel to it came out, I was really excited. Uh, and it was fun. I, I think you should go play it. So anyway, I was looking up how they developed this game. Because it was made by, I mean, you know, it had like a Kickstarter. Um, and I think this it was basically an indie uh, studio so you know I'm interested in indie games needless to say which is why we're here uh, so I, I did some research on River City Ransom and how they drew uh, how they de developed the game basically and they said they used uh, this program uh, tiled so they we're not going to be using it in the same way that they used it but uh, we're going to be using this nevertheless so I'm going to add a tile Game B, Assets, Maps, Grass 1. There we go. There it is. Tiny little 16 by 16 piece of grass. What we need to do now is draw. We need to draw. I kind of want to fill the entire screen and make it as grass. Rectangular, select, there we go, bucket fill. Boom. There. Now our entire tile map is a million little grass tiles. Okay. 
So let's save this thing. Uh, oh, actually we need to export as image. We need to export it and I guess use current zoom level? No, I want you to export the whole thing. Uh, overworld.png so this only supports uh, PNGs so here's what I'm going to do is I'm going to export it as a PNG minimize that go back over here there it is overworld 01.png 96 kilobytes. Now I'm going to open this in uh, paint.net. Make sure my sound is still recording in OBS. Okay, now I'm going to save as from paint.net, I'm going to save it as a 32 bit bitmap save close now there it is and it's going to be enormous 35 megabytes <laughs> our overworld is a gigantic 35 megabyte bitmap so needless to say this is not how you would do this sort of thing if we were actually programming on the original nintendo uh wouldn't be like this at all because you know obviously with the original Nintendo you had to fit everything into a 40 kilobyte cartridge and I can't even imagine uh, doing that so I'm not gonna hold myself to that restriction I'm gonna use as much uh, memory and disk space as I please uh, within reason so although I mean you might argue that that is not reasonable but that's okay it's also really easy these 32-bit um, bits per pixel bitmaps remember we've talked about this um, I use them because I don't have to there that's the easiest file format right it's basically just raw RGBA or ARGB uh, data in a file so there's no there's no palettes there's no ind indexing there's nothing it's no compression super simple so that's what I'm going to use um, okay so we need to load we need to load this map and this is getting a bit unwieldy uh, where do I here we go I'm gonna load it I'm gonna load it right here Actually, let me make a game bitmap for it Game bitmap G overworld one. I guess that is a fitting name. Let's go down here and back down here. Right after we load that. Okay, assets, maps, overworld01, .bmpx. I'm going to save that into G overworld, or I should say we're going to load that into G overworld01. Okay. Now, if I go down to, uh, and this is sort of some other thing that I wrote the last, the first time I recorded this video. If I go to render frame graphics, I had right here. I actually had not implemented uh, this draw overworld function, so I created it. And if you go to draw overworld, here it is. You get your same uh, local frame counter last frame scene, uh, the same situation um, that we have in the other game states. 
although I'm still debating, I'm still thinking about, I'm still thinking about how I want to um, fade the bitmap, right? Like we've been using this static uh, text color situation for fading the text in, and that works fine for the text. But what if I want to fade all of it, all of the graphics in, like you know, um, all of this this grass that you're about to see? Um, but we'll think about that later. Um, so this is kind of interesting. Uh, Blit 32 bitmap to buffer. Now, this is a terrible idea, but I'm going to do it anyway. Um, G over world 01, and we're going to draw it starting at 00. zero. So before I run this, uh, my first instinct is that it's going to um, crash. The game is going to crash because remember our overworld map is much larger than the screen. Much larger. And remember what happens when we try to draw off the edge of the screen is we crash. So we're going to have to, we're going to, have to remedy that. Um, secondly, how am I going to get this to how am, I, how am I going to get this to scroll um, as I walk around? So I, I need the map to be able to um, scroll so that I can wander around the, in the overworld. Um, yeah, so I'm going to have to create some sort of like, I think I'm going to have to create some sort of camera. I'm going to call it a camera, and it's going to basically sit above uh, basically... Uh, or how how would you how how can I describe this? The camera is basically going to be like your eyes, and they're going to be looking um, at the monitor. So it's going to be above the the two dimensional plane where your your character and your um, your tile map is. Anyway, I guess let me just go ahead and get this over with. I'm going to run this. I'm sure it's going to crash, but I just want to run it anyway, just for the heck of it. There it is. We crashed. All right, one second. Let me make sure my OBS audio is still working. All right. So I think uh, I think what we need. Um, obviously, that is not going to that is not going to do it. Um, there are a couple things we could do. We could either write another function. That is specifically uh, that is specifically made to draw the the uh, the background, and instead of using blit thirty two bit per pixel bitmap to buffer, or we could enhance the blit thirty two bits per pixel bitmap to buffer function uh, to take more uh, input. For example, um, we could tell it only draw, you know, st you, we could tell it to start at an XY coordinate within the bitmap and only draw uh, a certain subsection of it basically so that you would have the ability to draw just a subsection of the larger overworld map um, without having to and you wouldn't have to worry about uh, trying to draw off the edge of the screen so yeah Ask the flow. Let me go back to this website. In fact, I'm offended that you would even ask me to sign in. Okay, um, what was I doing? Oh yeah. So the other reason why this is, you know, a non-starter. Obviously, this is not going to work. Um, is because th imagine how wasteful that that would have been, even if we could draw off the edge of the screen without crashing. Here's our here's our monitor right here, right? That's our monitor. We start drawing at zero zero. We're gonna draw our overworld. Our overworld is like this big. I can't even like I can't even really. Oh I can zoom out so I can't. There we go. Our overworld is like that big. You get the idea. Uh, 
and even though this is off screen we would literally be burning horsepower blitting all these pixels that you can't even see um, that would be that would be a terrible horrible thing to do uh, so we're not going to do it um, and the question now is what are we going to do what are we going to do yeah I'm really not sure I think I want to All right, I guess I'm going to make a new function, and I'm going to call it, what am I going to call it? It's going to be blitz something. It's going to be called blitz uh, overworld, oh wait, uh, blitz tile map to buffer. That could work. As usual, we need a game bitmap. We need uh, blitz sixteen. Well, actually, no, we don't. We don't need. We don't need uh, coordinates because we know that uh, the background, the 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 overworld, the tile map, whatever you want to call it, is going to cover the entire screen. Uh, without exception, so it doesn't it doesn't even need an XY coordinate. We know that's going to start at zero zero, and we know it's going to go for 384 pixels that way and 240 pixels that way. So, yeah, tile map, blit tile map to buffer. I'm just trying to decide if I like that name or not, which I guess I do. Um, let's go make it. Let's make it happen. Although I could, I actually, I could, uh, I could take an X and a Y here, but they wouldn't be the starting position of where to start drawing the bitmap, but they would be the, um, like, camera position. Like, where where do we start? Uh, basically an index into the, the bitmap, so we can draw in the very center of the bitmap. You know what I mean? All right, let me see. Starting screen, pixel... I guess I'll just, let me just copy this, paste it in here, we'll make this work. Um, we don't need an X and a Y because we know it's going to be 0, 0. Starting bitmap pixel. Okay, Y pixel while 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 Y pixel is less than game res height. width and let's 
probably it. And we're never going to have any like transparent pixels in our overworld, I don't think. So we don't need that condition. It's probably it. I feel like um, this could probably be simplified. Like we probably don't need that. Or can just set it to a constant, couldn't we? Anyway, we'll 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 optimize it later. Um, back to draw overworld, or yes, draw overworld. And you know, since we're drawing the oh, we don't need the mem set anymore. Since we're drawing the uh, we're drawing the the overworld over the top of it, blit tile map to buffer g overworld uh, okay let's see what we'll see what happens stop no it still crashed It still crashed, of course. All right, let me back up, think about this a little bit. Uh, stop this. Uh, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to make another. I'm going to make another global called Upoint G Camera, and our camera, I guess, will start at zero zero. I'm trying to decide if this should be. Do you think this should be in the uh, player? or hero data structure? Probably not, because there may be situations where we have things like um, cutscenes, uh, scripted scenes, where the camera needs to move uh, independently of where the player is. So, let's, mm, all right, let's go back down to blit tile map to buffer. Okay, starting screen pixel width times height minus, well, I don't think we need that. Uh, height minus, minus width. And then the starting bitmap pixel is, yeah, width and height. Um, but we should put our camera, our camera needs to be factored, be a factor in this equation. Okay bitmap width times bitmap height minus bitmap width plus we need to do plus g camera dot x Minus uh, game bitmap bitmap info emi header dot width times g camera dot y. 
I think that is correct. Okay, memory, bitmap, bitmap pixel. Okay, four, pixel zero. Model is less than height, pixel width. Offset equals starting plus x minus width times y. Bitmap offset equals starting bitmap plus x minus width times y. And then we just mem copy. And mem copy. I don't think that should crash. Right? Yeah, that should be okay. And uh, needless to say, this function could benefit from uh, some SIMD as well. So we, but we'll we'll get there. We're, we'll get it to work first, and then we'll do we'll do SIMD later. Let's see, thirteen minutes. I'm trying to find out, see what time, how much time we have. Okay, um, let's just run this. And in fact, we can skip ahead. We can skip all the menu stuff if we just set game state, the starting game state, game state uh, overworld. All right. There it is. Alright, we've done it. We are now walking on grass. Very cool. Um, what next? Okay, there are a couple things uh, to talk about next. Uh, Ryan R. Source, repos, AB. Assets, maps. Okay, so when I when I created this uh, tiled map file, it when I exported uh, this image, this ping image, um, it also created this thing. And if I open it in Notepad, you can see that it's an XML document, and you can see that all the tiles are represented. Uh, in this CSV and remember since all I have is just grass forever they're all all the tiles are, are one so the good news here is we can parse this file pretty easily in in our code and we can then map these things to whether a tile is passable or not that's kind of a cool visual effect when I highlight the number one, it highlights all the other number ones. Anyway, yeah, so we definitely should be doing that. I'm going to write a parser to parse this file. Um, I'm not sure if I want to do that right now, though. What I kind of want to do, what I kind of want to do right now is... New file, 16 by 16, and I want to draw some water. I want to draw an ocean paint bucket. That look like water. It does. And this is basically going to look. I guess it's going to look just like the grass, only it's going to be blue instead of green. Pencil. Why? 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 Set that to one pixel, please. Um, 
Yeah, so I guess I need to figure out how to make waves. Like that. Okay, and let's get a little let's get a little two tone action going on here. I I really don't know what I'm doing. I'm just trying to make this look good. Looks like water, kinda. All right, save. Uh, grass. Oh one. This will be. Water 01 dot BMP. Okay. That's fine. Now let's go back to here. Let us add, if I go to this tile set, I'm going to add a new tile, water 01, to our tile set. I'm going to select it over here, and I'm going to make a lake or a pond of some sort. Actually, no, I'm going to make an ocean. Where is the pencil? Terrain brush? No? No? Oh my goodness. Shape fill, bucket fill, eraser, magic wand, select same tile. Wang brush, terrain brush. I feel like the terrain brush ought to do it, but it doesn't, does it? Oh, here we go. All right. Nice. Uh, now we get to save, we get to export, um, I'm going to overwrite this ping file, PNG, oh wait, that didn't work, save, export, at, wait, 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 export as image, okay, all that looks good, export, yes, replace, go now. Do you want to save? Yes, I do. Now I need to open it in paint.net. And you know, this is a lot of steps and it, it may actually become beneficial at some point to write, to, to make a ping a PNG file format um, loader because, you know, it, it is kind of absurd having a 37 megabyte uh, map file and it's not even going to be my only map. I, I do want to have like dungeons and indoor areas and towns and things like this. Um, but we'll cross that bridge when we get there. I think I think in the end it, it isn't going to be that big of a deal because I plan on packing all of these assets into a compressed archive so you know that's the one good thing about a 32-bit per pixel bitmap is that they compress very well. Um, so yeah, I'll put them all inside of some sort of compressed archive and then basically decompress them at runtime while the game is loading. So um, it won't look like 37 megabytes on disk. Anyway, um, open sesame. And that did not have my, where's my uh, pond? Didn't have my pond. Oh wait, that's because I should have opened the ping file. There we go. Uh, close that. Save as. Save as 32-bit bitmap. Overwrite. Yes. Very good. Uh, let's see what it looks like now. There we go. Now we have water. So I've got grass. I've got water. Now. I'm I'm Jesus right now because I can walk on the water and that is where we're going to have to uh, we're going to have to parse that CSV file and basically have an in-memory representation of that tile map and that pink color is 
starting to really get on my nerves so I may actually disable the pink color it is starting to wear on me main game window um, There we go. So I think next um, I'll probably need to create a few different kinds of grass tiles because this repeating pattern uh, doesn't look very good so I need it to look more like a random noise type of thing but this is pretty cool. Um, for the first time ever it looks like we're, we're getting somewhere really. Alright let's see. Oh yeah, where are my where are my FPS? Two hundred and twenty-two FPS. That's pretty pretty bad. Wonder what it is in release mode. There we go. Back up to two thousand. I like 2000 FPS. You can see our memory consumption has jumped way up to 41 megabytes now thanks to our overworld map. Alright so I think next time uh, what I need to do is I need to move the camera around like when my whenever my character gets close to the edge of the screen I think I should start moving the camera at that point. I think it's going to look pretty cool. I don't know if we have time to do it today, though. C24, and I already have a what? 33. We have a little more time. Let's go to Lit Tile Map. I don't know if I like that name, Blit Tile Map. Maybe it should be Blit Overworld to buffer, or maybe just Blit Blit Background to buffer. That's probably a better idea. We can let's sum D this real quick. Uh, if defined AVX, then do that. Is that how that goes?
Okay, I think this should be really easy to simdify. So I'm doing, I have AVX defined right now. Memory offset, bitmap offset. Yeah, you know what? I should probably just copy that. Put it right there. This one is still plus plus. Okay. Bitmap. Equals. We're going to use an intrinsic for if there is such a thing mm512 mm256. That's what it is, I think. mm256 load si is there an si128. Move unaligned packed integer values. Moves 256 bits of packed integer values from the source operand to the destination. I think that's what we want. plus um, bitmap offset. And this probably needs to be a pixel 32. Oh, you know what? No, this doesn't, this is not necessary. Of course not. We could do a M256 I, M256 I. Yeah, so now this is a 256 bit bitmap octa pixel. Or should it be octo pixel? Bitmap octopixel. Uh, and you know what? I'm not going to initialize that either. That's starting to look a little better. Now we no longer need that line. And we need, all we need to do now is. Six uh, mm two fifty six store store you uh, si one twenty eight or si two fifty six yeah that's it right there. I like how that, that other one was documented, but this one is not. Uh, we're going to make this a... We need to store it, basically, in back buffer memory plus memory offset. And we, what are we going to store there? We're going to store our bitmap octa 
octopixel. Done and done. Now, question is, is it going to work? Let's run it and find out. Hey, hey, hey. it works. And look at this, 2300 frames per second. Oh, 1200, okay, sorry. But that's better than the 200 that we were getting. And it works like a charm. Okay, now. Don't need to do that. Let's go fix this code for SSE2. Uh, where are you? Those are the same. This is not the same. M one twenty eight I bitmap uh, quad. Right. Yep. And then we need to change this to plus four. We need bitmap quad. This is going to be, uh, it's going to change to 128 mm128. No, mm load si128. Bingo. And this is going to change to MM store SI128. Bingo. Bitmap quad pixel. that. Don't need that. Okay. All right, commented out. So now we're running the non SIMD version. FPS is 241, 227, 223. All right. Close that. Now we will define SSE2. FPS is 1231, 1270, 1254. So we got a thousand FPS by doing that. And finally, let's see if the AVX version is any faster. Thirteen, thirteen. So it looks like the AVX version is just barely faster than the SSE2 version. Um, could be lots of reasons for that though. Either way, um, Either one of those SIMD versions is vastly better than no SIMD at all, right? All right, so I think that 
is that that is our our time for today. Um, we yeah, and I know how to fix those now. Thank you. Um, <laughs> I'll fix those warnings. Um, but any, anyway, that is all the time that we have for today. Uh, we got our, our our tile map up and running, our overworld map. So now we can really get our design on and draw tiles and you know draw mountain ranges and lakes and rivers and oceans and deserts and all sorts of really cool stuff. Um, next time I think I'll probably write a parser for the CSV um, so and we will make an in-memory representation uh, of the actual tiles so that way we can do not it's not really collision detection it's more of just like we know which tiles we're allowed to move through and which tiles we can't move through um, so that you can't do things like uh, walk over the top of mountains and walk across water and all this kind of stuff um, but yeah that that's uh, it's good progress for today so as always thank you for watching if you have any questions or comments uh, please don't hesitate to leave your questions and comments on the video I will address them in an upcoming episode also, don't forget that uh, we have a companion GitHub repository. There's a GitHub repo. I keep it updated along with these episodes so that you can follow along at home. If you are enjoying this video series and you would like to see me continue working on this game and uh, you would like to see me actually finish this project, then uh, please do encourage me by liking and subscribing and telling your friends all this good stuff. So uh, that's all for today. Thank you very much. Uh, talk to you later. Bye.